What's up guys, Anders here with another Black Desert video. Today we're going to go over the NAEU and Korean PC patch notes. But before we do that, I want to thank the supporters of this channel. You guys help keep these videos going, so thank you so much for the support. If you want to help, you can do so by subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, liking or disliking this video, and hitting that bell icon. Bell is good, so please ding the bell to get notified when I upload my next video. As for the NA and EU PC patch notes, we have new events for the release of Hash Awakening and Succession. The events we get are collect commemorative coins. All you need to do for this is play on a seasoned character for an hour once a day to get two coins a day. If you hit level 61 on a seasoned character, you get even more coins. So from 56 to 61, you get a bonus coin for leveling. A total of 90 coins for hitting level 61. If you already hit level 61 on your seasoned character, you will have them on your challenge tab ready to collect on your seasoned character. I recommend you exchange the coins for Kafra stone bundles or fail stacks. The Takro Spirit Stone is definitely not worth 100 seals, so don't exchange it for that. Find the Relic event is a grind event or gathering or fishing event that will get you these artifacts and you can exchange them from random items. Once you awaken your hash and finish the succession quest, you'll be able to do the event quest. Go to your Black Spirit and he'll have an event tab to start the quest. It's in the same area as the Awakening quest boss, so make sure to do this as soon as you're done with the Awakening and Succession quest lines so you save some time. All the quests ask you to do is do some combos in both Awakening and Succession and then kill 100 Abandoned Iron mobs to get some enhancing materials and two days of Old Moon Book and some loot scrolls. We now also have a leveling event for Hash up to level 61, and we have another attendance event for the next 11 days. So some good stuff in there as well. As for class changes, Berserker's Giant Leap has been fixed. Again, I don't know how many times they've touched the skill. Nothing much else of note for us this week in terms of changes. The big PvE Awakening buff is coming next week. I'll go over which classes are getting those buffs in a minute when we talk about the Korean notes. The price of pen accessories has increased. Uh, it's going to be by a lot, guys, so if you were planning on buying a pen accessory, it's going to be a bad time for you right now. Band has been added as well. You can summon a shy in your family of characters to play a music piece from the music album. The summon shy will stay there till the piece is over or you move far away enough. You can also summon shies on ships, but not during node wars or sieges. They gave us more clues for the ring merchant ring. One of them seems to indicate Paddock's Island as a grind spot for the piece. The PA buff you get from RBF is now three seconds longer and has super Super armor, skill XP has been added to the loot obtained when defeating Ferret, Ancient Paturum, and Giant Mudster Guild Boss Summons, Old Dragonies Box, which is the loot that drops when Garmus spawns and attacks you in Dragon's places is now more visible. Four new guild skills for Node Wars and Sieges have been added, so Node War or Siege exclusive CTG, Mass Heal, Mass HP Regen Tech, and Mass Movement Speed Increase. The CTG is still Guild Master only. Why is this a thing? I don't know. They note that normal CTG can now only be used on channels that do not have ongoing war. So it seems that we still only have one CTG for node wars, but it won't consume the normal CTG. So you can still summon people, I guess, for Garmouth and things like this after the war is over. Shiny metal rewards have also doubled, so you get more chances to convert them into loot scrolls or whatever else you need. You can now also check the equipment of your alt characters from the character selection menu. Now, as for Korea, they received a ton of class changes, unless I say otherwise. All these buffs are PvE only. I've summarized the changes and we'll go over the individual damage percentage changes next week when we get the updates on our servers. So Sork Awakening has received buffs on Turnback Slash, Soul Harvest, Blade of Darkness, Absolute Bloody Calamity, Grim Reaper's Judgment, and Cardian's Nightmare. The cooldown of Cardian's Nightmare has been lowered to 25 seconds. For Tamer, you have Bolt Wave, Flash, Flash Slash, Flash Pull Thrust, Garuda, Full Moon, Legendary Beast Dance, and Succession Bolt Wave now have more damage in PvE. The range of extra hits on these skills have also increased as well. Musa Awakening Spinner, Twister, Foul Play, and Dash Slash now have more damage in PvE. Extra Credits now has a 12 second cooldown. Valkyrie Awakening has the Lydium. Damage has increased in both PvE and PvP. And the number of hits in Sacrum Ferret has increased to 3 hits. Kunuichi Awakening Lethal Spin Spree, Wrath, Chakram Rise, Chain Crash, Wheel of Wrath, Indignation, Dance Macabre all have increased PvE damage. Ninja Awakening Seamless, Sudden Decapitation, 
Katana Shower, Sura Chaos Spree all have increased PvE damage as well. Now, Wizard Awakening, Aqua Jail, Aqua Bomb, Bolide, Chilling Wave, and Hellfire all have increased PvE damage. For Witch Awakening, Equilibrium Break, Fissure Wave, Thunderstorm, Yoke of Ordeal, and Voltaic Pulse have increased damage in PvE. Dark Knight Awakening, Spirit Hunt, Twilight Dash, Spirit Blaze, Root of Catastrophe all have increased PvE damage. For Mystic Awakening, you have Tidal Burst, Rapid Stream, Rising Dragon, Wave Orb, Sea Burial, Spiral Torpedo, and Dragon Shatter all having increased PvE damage. And for Mystic Succession, you have Sea Burial, Wave Orb, and Fist Fury all having increased PvE damage as well. Archer Uproot and Luthergon Call now have increased PvE damage as well. And for Guardian, she did not receive any PvE damage buffs, but she doesn't really need it. Succession Guardian, however, did receive faster startup animations on Mountain Slam, Boulder Crush First Hit, Fierce Disdain and Black Blood Circle. Those are very good changes. Korea also received the new RBF map, Garment's Nest, so we should expect that next week. The normal RBF map was also changed to no longer have those standing buildings where you have wizards on the top of them, but instead now we have standing walls so you can perch on top of them. Same effect, so I'm not sure what the intended change was. The spawn areas have shifted as well, so there's that. Rek Rashan and the Battle of Gold Mons was also added in Korea. Rek Rashan is an ocean field boss that can spawn near Port Rat. Near there as well is now a ton of Goldmon pirate ships. You can acquire Karak materials by sinking these ships, and you get more Sailor XP than normal by defeating these Goldmon pirate ships. Agris will now be consumed when killing these, however, so keep that in mind. There was also more ocean updates with a new Wonseok, which is the Karak totem, essentially. You can get the totem through the Seacoin shop, there's a new vendor in Port Rat as well that sells Seacoin materials, and you can work to make your totem higher quality, and it improves almost every stat on your ship when equipped. It looks really cool. They've made Port Rat a little bit more lively with the addition of these mobs as well. And that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Are you looking forward to the PvE Awakening buffs? Are you excited to play Hash Awakening and Succession? Let me know in the comments. And as always, guys, thanks again for watching. Thanks for listening. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care. The currents are uh, not, not in our favor. Ten current feels like molasses. Imagine a blizzard has just hit you. That's how it feels. I'm putting a lantern for Anders, bro. Holy shit, I can't even see it. Oh, I see it. A little yellow lantern. It's flying, bro. Holy oh, that's so shit. nice. That's, um... We're we're moving quite quickly and it's not It's you know, following <laughs> it's, not, Holy. it's not very realistic. What the fuck is happening? It's stuck on the sail, bro. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of immersion breaking. I'm gonna have to refund this game.